Evening, welcome to the Derby Debrief from Rams TV, live from Pride Park Stadium. Owen Bradley with Becky McGrover and Sean Barker alongside to bring you some reaction to a monumental win for Derby County this afternoon. They've beaten Bolton by a single goal to nil. Kane Wilson's header eight minutes from time was the difference between the sides. It's a crucial victory because it means the Rams open up a four-point gap between themselves and Bolton in third. Uh, the leaders, uh, Portsmouth, won today as well. So the top two win, and nobody else does in the leading pack. We'll show you the table uh, and results from elsewhere a little later. Reaction to come from the camp. You'll hear from Joe Wildsmith, who was outstanding today, and from Paul Warren as well. Uh, we'll kick off with a word or two from the guys. Um, Becky, what a win. Yes, very, very good. Um, I think we started a bit cagey. I don't know, I think um, Baltimore were on top for maybe like the first 15 or so. But then... Last 10 minutes of the first half, I feel like we started to find our rhythm a bit more and stop forcing the ball. I think we just kind of, when we regained possession, just ended up kicking it away quite a bit in the first 10, 15 minutes, which wasn't helping us. So then once we just played a few balls and then had more purposeful runs, and we had more chances. And although we didn't play like our best football, sometimes you have to do like you have to get the win when you don't play your best football and that's what we've done today like we've we've grinded out that result after scoring the goal like we look to go and score another one obviously then Bolton um I'd say we're on top for the last 10 minutes but we defended with our lives like I like the um emergency defending as I call it um we just oh, we were just so like it was just good to watch and good to like the desire and passion from the team shown in the last like ten minutes of the game. Yeah, there was there was certainly bags of that. Sure, not the prettiest of performances from Derby, but effective. It was. We said before the game, there's two um, teams that play with different styles. We saw uh, Bolton control the ball for long spells. They got in the final third in the first half. I thought they were a little bit tentative to take the shot on. I thought they worked around the box well and, and reluctant to, to shoot from distance. Second half, I thought Bolton started really, really well and put us on the back foot. Of course, we made changes at half time. Maybe that disrupted it. But we talked about set P. Paul's been banging on for. So this is what it means, by the way. This is Paul Warren at full time. Yeah, well, uh, he understands the importance. I know everyone downplays it. You, you know the significance of this game, and that's the response. That's his natural response after the game. It's a go and hug Joe Wildsmith because of the saves he made in the game. And you watch the post match, and you'll probably feel he's in control at that point. But those emotions are, are the natural, they're understandable straight after the game. And the set piece. He's talked about it for 18 months, he's banged on about it for 18 months, the importance of set pieces, and today was evident of that. We scored a set piece against the run of play, Bolton were the better team for long spells without causing numerous chances. Joe made three or four good saves, but we then were on the front foot after the goal. We had to defend for our lives in the last 10 minutes, and I'll be honest, that's the best and probably my favourite minutes of, of the season. Say that, yeah. Well, it's it's... I thought the back three were outstanding. Joe was brilliant. Adams was, was excellent again in midfield. But you have to show different sides here. And that's the side that will please Paul more than anything. It's the side, that, the side of them that pleases me because we've asked questions that, over the course of the season. There's, there's good times to play football. There's times to play the ball through the pitch. There's times to really showcase what you're about in possession. The desire to keep the ball at the back of the net in the games that matter. Are, are, are what really probably excite me. And more from the guys, and um, we'll talk through the big moments as well. But let's get some reaction from downstairs. You saw him enjoying himself already. Uh, here's the Derby boss, Paul Warren. Yeah, it was a game, obviously, <clears throat> neither team wanted to lose. It was a tight game. Uh, I didn't think there was a lot in it. I thought Joe made two really good saves. We probably didn't have enough impetus. Um, and it's a bit obviously a blow. We had a few um, issues. Uh, obviously, I've made four subs before the 45th minute, so that's um, sorry at half time included. So you know, some were in four, some weren't. So, um, but uh, to win the game's great, and I always say to the lads, I've just said it to him there. Look, you know, there's times in the game you can bend, don't break. You've got to be under pressure. You've got to have to withstand pressure. You're going to have to defend the box really well. And obviously, the last seven minutes, Cash, Foz, um, and Nels especially. One headers that um, kept us a clean sheet that enabled us to win. So I was really proud with that. And as I'm really proud of the fact that look, in tight games like that, and I said this last season and a bit this season, sometimes it's just a set-piece goal that wins it. Uh, and Kane has been a thorn in my um, rear for a couple of weeks because when we do set-pieces on a Friday, he's in the reserves, so to speak, or the 
game changes and he kept scoring and causing absolute havoc. So he's a bit of a maverick and for him to score is good. And, you know, I thought he came on and had a really good impact, as did Tomo, by the way. I thought Tomo was really good. And Corey came on 70 minutes. Foz hasn't played for, uh, seems like, three seasons, but he came in and looked uh, really assured. So overall, really pleased. We could play better, obviously, but I ain't bothered about that. I'm not going to pick the bones out of that at the moment. I'm really proud of how hard the lads work for each other. We had JJ up, you know, from London today to come and support the lads. There's the whole dressing room is buzzing of injured players. Little Colo buzzing, got him on the bounce, bless him. He got the crowd going. So all in all, really proud of the group. You know, I love the group, and and to win a game like that against a very good team, uh, really pleased. You mentioned the changes that you made. Can you just talk us through what was tactical and, and what wasn't? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Well, obviously, um, uh, the first one wasn't because he, he felt his hamstring, Dwight did, so that's uh, not a good sign. Then it just felt, obviously we changed our shape, then we put another midfielder in because we couldn't really get a grip, and I thought we looked okay. And then it was just the thought of, like, Sheehan is probably their standout player, probably the standout player in the game for them especially. So uh, I just thought we just need a bit more legs with uh, Tomo, because that's what Tomo, and I thought Tomo held the ball really well, but you know, players have different things and some players you need it for this game, some for that, and today it just felt like we just need a bit more legs. So I brought him on, uh, but Tom and um, Tom tightened up, calf, um, which is disappointing. And so did Wardy. I think Wardy's more precautionary, um, but I think Tom's more injury. So, which is a blow if we've lost Dwight and Tom today, but um, it always seems to be the thing. We, you know, every <laughs> every bit of sunshine seems to have a little bit of a cloud. So that's the cloud today. But we'll assess them obviously on Monday and, and see where we're at. You made a comment to us. I'm not sure if it was Monday or if it was ahead of this game about Craig Forsyth being sort of the perfect man to bring in because he knows what it's like to play at Pride Park in front of that sort of crowd, and, and he was excellent for you today. Yeah, really good, uh, and I thought the crowd were really good. I mean, I don't know if um, I bemoaned earlier in the week about the severe lack of flags at this place, and then I came out and went to Richie like, da da, like there's flags everywhere. I'm going to start moaning about other things. But uh, so it just felt like a you know a proper football stadium full of life. And I said to the lads before the game, look, like, just enjoy it. Like you know, give me your job lot, and if they're better than us, fair play. I won't moan about it. You know, it's just a proper game with two very good teams, two very good set of supporters trying to get their team going so it felt like a proper game and obviously Foz can play here you know with full houses it doesn't phase him at all and if any player you could just you know drag and drop he's the ideal one he doesn't get stressed about anything I don't even think his heart rate ever gets over 50 so he's always very relaxed and he's the perfect fit for us so yeah so just felt a really good game and it's just nice to score nil nil I don't think would have been befitting the tension of the game but for us to score and then for seven minutes to go up and obviously, the, and you know, some genius in the stands will somewhere sit and go, oh, why are they sitting back? You, you just can't get out. They just pin you in because they're going for it, like we've done with games where we've been behind and every throw-in's coming in and every... But the way the lads defended uh, made me really proud. So, yeah, really good day. Uh, happy with uh, the performances. The only slight disappointment is the injuries, obviously. Seven games to go. How long do you enjoy this before you refocus for, for what's to come? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy it for a couple of days. I'm going home to pick my mum up tomorrow to bring her up for my daughter's 18th birthday. So that would be a nice drive home with her tomorrow because I don't like her telling me off about how tactically we got it wrong. So I'll enjoy it tomorrow. Um, and then obviously when we come back in Monday, all our focus is on the next game. But it's nice not to have a Tuesday game. It's just, you know, I've said it loads of times. I'm not trying to be too critical of our group. I love them, but... We are the oldest squad in the league, so three games in a week is tough for us. And uh, unfortunately, you know, that was evident again today. So the, the fact that we can have a week of feeling good about ourselves, really trying to get some more back, trying to get some more training in wash, um, uh, will be good. Um, yeah, and then we uh, revisit the sort of tactical element of it come um, Monday morning at nine o'clock. So not quite the perfect day for Derby with a couple of injury concerns, but not far off it for Paul Warren, who side beat Bolton thanks to Kane Wilson's uh, goal, the only goal of the game, eight minutes from time. And if there's one area that uh, Bolton do have a weakness in, Becky, it's set pieces, and, and we thought Derby would try to explore that, and ultimately they did. Yeah, I think we've looked dangerous from set pieces, like, basically the whole season. We've just struggled to convert some of them. Like, you saw on Tuesday, like... Cash it in the bar from a set piece. So it's nice to just 
convert one of them. So I hope, like in the games we've got left for the season, we can just continue with that because we have the quality of delivery. With if Ward's on the pitch, or we saw Elder there, or Hurahan, like we have that delivery into the box, and we do look really dangerous from them. So yeah, it was really nice to score from one. And when games are won and lost by fine margins, <coughs> you made the point already. Paul Wall and his staff, since they arrived, have talked about the importance of dead ball situations. They have, and you look at the, as, as Becky just said, the, the quality of the ball coming coming in. There's no excuse to not be there to, to put it in the back of the net. Um, it was older actually, that, that, that took the corner. It's first touch of the ball. It was a wonderful delivery. Um, Bolton just allowed Kane Wilson time and space to, to get ahead of his marker and, and find the back of the net with his head. So th those... It did feel it, it was a tense game. The atmosphere was brilliant. It, it felt like a proper game. It felt like two teams going toe to toe, two teams sticking with their style and seeing who came out on top. And you didn't know which way it was going to go. You really didn't. And in those tight games, set pieces can be huge. And, and Paul's had experience with it. He, he's got promoted through winning games when maybe he hasn't dominated the ball or hasn't been the best team because of moments like that. And that defined the win between, uh, you know, taking three points and, and getting a point, and that's a huge win. Uh, however we've said it beforehand, afterwards, it's a huge win to give us that little bit of space away from Bolton. Uh, you look at the stats, Derby had more shots, uh, level in terms of shots on target. It, it felt as though Bolton were more menacing, and with the exception of the goal, they had the best opportunity, and Derby have Joe Wildsmith to thank. How good was that first half save from Bob Varson's header? Oh, it was incredible. Like, I had to watch back on the replay because with how good it was. Um, but those are the moments which keep you in the games and we're just very lucky to have like Joe and he's just so incredible in goal. So, and I, they kind of like jeer you up as well because you, you know what could have been if he hadn't made that save. So then it just gives you that energy to go on and try and score yourself further down the pitch. But yeah, that save in the first half, the one in the second half, which was going like bottom corner and just... His command, he commanded the box very well in terms of like the punching and slowing things down when they need to be slowed down, just taking his time on goal kicks after we'd scored. They're all like the little game management things which we need, like goalkeepers and just like the whole team to do when, when you've scored and then you've got the pressure on you. You need to manage that time left and just doing that. People call it like dark arts kind of thing. It's, yeah, it's just very useful and he, I think he's did that very well. I think the same in the second half on, on Thomason might have been better than I first realised, but the one of the first half, you only need to see it once to know how good that was. Yeah, well, Joe's a, he's a very good goalkeeper. Um, obviously, early in the season, he, he had a fight with Vickers to, to see who was the number one. Um, he, he's found his home here. He's, he's found a consistency. Um, and he has moments in games where he makes big saves. We've, we've seen it over, I think he said, 90 games now he's played for Derby. Over the 90 games, he's shown moments where you need your goalkeeper to make a save at big times. That's what you need him there for, and, and he's done that. Um, it was a brilliant ball in. Uh, Bob Varson gets the header. Wonderful save, not only to get his hand to it, to, but to claw it away. And the 10 minutes of the second half where Bolton were on top and they had a couple of chances and, and he made those saves, it was integral to get the clean sheet and integral to get the win. So a pat on the back for Joe. Again, I thought the back three were excellent. The, the last 10 minutes were about built that the confidence as a centre half and balls are coming into your box time and time again. I don't think Fozzie missed a header. I don't think Cash missed a header or Nels. So they just I will tell you that they will 100% have enjoyed that. They wouldn't have felt the pressure. They would have said, put it back on us, keep it going into the box because they were that good. And again, all round performance from back to front, it might not have been the prettiest at times, but it really doesn't matter. Bolton with a prettier team have nothing to show for it. So Paul will walk away from here. I think he's pleased with respite for the lads, mm -hmm. but probably respite for himself and the staff because this was a big pressure game. They've turned up, they've delivered, and now having that full week of taking yourself away from it, looking forward at the next few games and working out how you're going to get results from now to the end of the season to keep you in the top two spots. Yeah, it was certainly a big week for Derby. They picked up nine points from it, four wins in a row now for the Rams. So let's hear from uh, one of the men of the moment. Here's the goalkeeper, Joe Wildsmith. Um, it was great to, to get the maximum points today against, obviously, someone who was right behind us and create a bit of a cushion. I uh, thought the, the lads were excellent today. Um, and the determination and sort of fight to, to keep going and, and get that get that goal that we needed um, and get the win uh, was was second to none and I thoroughly enjoyed this afternoon. 
you were excellent as well. That save in the first half in particular to keep them in it. Yeah, I mean, helpful boys in there will tell me it's it's just my job. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's it's nice to make make saves and, and for that to sort of uh, contribute to a win, and especially a clean sheet. Um, so yeah, it was great to 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 really sort of uh, contribute in a way that 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 gets accolades, I suppose, uh, for a goalkeeper. So uh, yeah, it was a great moment for me and. Um, Nice to sort of do it in a in a game and an atmosphere that was uh, was second to none really. Yeah, was that pure reflexes that one? Yeah, I mean it's one of those. It's it's, it's instinctive, and uh, we do drills in in training that sort of prepare for those moments. Uh, you just sort of make a decision. You're not coming for the cross. You spin and and you go. You sort of got nothing to lose, and you're hoping that obviously one of your centre offs is, is going to win a header. And if they don't, you you put yourself in a position to to best save it so uh, yeah it was uh, great that it came off and, and great that um, obviously Sibs and Cash cleared it afterwards and yeah uh, just obviously great that it contributed and uh, and we got the win today. And the centre halves didn't miss too much else, how proud are you of everyone for the way that you clung on at the end? Yeah I thought it was excellent especially when the crowd is is so big and it was it was it was loud, uh, it's, it's hard to to communicate sometimes and, th and then it sort of comes down to bonds and, and relationships that you've grown sort of through the season um, and you sort of put your trust in them to to be in a position and do the right things and check shoulders uh, for runners so they, they've they been excellent and, and I think they've been excellent all season to be honest and, and that shows with the defensive record that we've, we've sort of um, kept. Um, I thought Nels headed everything, Foz headed everything and, and Cash really sort of put his body on the line today and, and made some really important headers late on. Um, I thought Cal was excellent when he came on, uh, made a real crucial header uh, tracking back um, and then you sort of go into your subs who, who sort of came on and really um, gave us a foothold in the second half to, to really build on. Um, and obviously they all sort of come together to, to score the goal, which was nice. Cal obviously putting the ball in, Kane getting the first contact, and then Wag says that he scored on the line. I'm not too sure, but um, yeah, I mean, I'll give it him, I suppose, uh, as a striker. So it'd be good for him. And um, yeah, it's just all round sort of good day for the club. Great atmosphere, great game, and, and everyone will go home happy. Yeah, you mentioned the atmosphere, 32,000 plus here today, biggest attendance in eight years. Have you known many crowds like that? Well, I'd say it was completely full and uh, the atmosphere at full time and when we scored it was deafening. Um, it was unbelievable. It was the only sort of atmosphere I could really sort of um, sort of com uh, compare it to was when we played up at, up at Liverpool last season uh, in terms of sort of atmosphere and, and the feeling of I cannot speak to anyone um, because it's that loud. So uh, yeah, credit to to the fans today really made it a good atmosphere and made made it easier for us and and, and really drove us on in moments in the game when we needed it so uh, yeah credit to those and and i um, glad we could send them home smiling and just finally on you you've now played more games for derby than you played at, at sheffield wednesday your boyhood club i just wonder how you reflect on on the move to derby and the time here so far uh, i think it's been the best thing that i had to do in my career i really do uh, i came here and my ambition was to play as many games as possible. The fact that I've played more now for Derby than than I did at Sheffield Wednesday in in just two seasons is um, is is quite sort of um, a proud moment for me. And um, yeah, it's uh, really nice that I sort of capped it off in a in a performance like that, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, it's um, yeah really proud moment, and um, hopefully many more to come. That's Derby goalkeeper Joe Wildsmith. Results from League One this afternoon. Uh, the key games, really, that we were watching going in. Barnsley held at home by Cheltenham. Uh, Barnsley dropping points with a goalless draw there. And uh, Portsmouth, the leaders, visiting Peterborough, who started the day fourth in the table. Portsmouth get the win. They edge closer uh, to clinching promotion. They stay five points clear of Derby. We'll look at the table in a moment or two. Uh, the day's big winners, uh, Reading. Uh, we know what they're going through at the moment. Uh, they beat Cambridge by four goals to nil. And Lincoln City added again, despite having a man sent off late on, they beat Bristol Rovers by five goals to nil. Another stonking victory uh, for them. Uh, this is what it all means for the League One table. Uh, Portsmouth maintain 
that five point lead over Derby who still have to go to Fratton Park. The Rams open up a four point gap between them and Bolton in third. It's now seven points between the Rams and both Peterborough and Barnsley who have that game in hand. Uh, Oxford stay in the top six. Stephen is dropping to eighth uh, and Lincoln continuing their run and getting closer uh, to breaking in. At the other end, it's uh, pretty much as you were. Uh, Reading putting more points on the board. They may be vital if uh, more points deductions are still to come from the EFL. A final word from the guys in the studio before we go. Uh, seven games remain now, Becky, and they are all going to be just as big as today. Yeah, you have to take each one as a bit like a cup final. So go into it, give it your all, know that you can't underestimate a team. We can't win today and then go and drop like six, seven points like elsewhere because then that just makes today's win like pointless basically. So we have to keep that momentum going, that positivity, desire, just that like willingness to like work as a team and like show yourself, your coaching staff, your fans that like we are Derby, we, we are, we want to get promoted like we are, we want to go up. I know that Derby were, were second for about a month until they slipped out recently, back in the top two now, of course, but this is the first time they've ever really opened up a gap between themselves and the chasing pack. Does the psychology shift at all for them now? Yeah, because of the position we find ourselves in, because of the performances of the results of the last two or three weeks. Um, we had a chance early in the season at second, we didn't make the most of it, we've been given another chance and we're, we're making every opportunity count. Um, huge, huge win to, today. We have to move on and we have to move on quickly because every single game is as important as today. The, the, the intensity, the, the pressure, the tension within this ground was palpable and we have to make it feel like that from now until the end of the season. It's up to us, it's in our hands, we've got ourselves in a great position, we've got some wonderful players, we're playing with form, that has to uh, continue from now until the end of the season, every single game, but what we've allowed is, is a tiny room for error, and there might be, and there's a good chance there will be, but you can only have one of those mistakes, so every single game's huge, but it's what you're in football for, this is why it gets so exciting, so enjoyable, and I hope everyone enjoys this afternoon um, and then we start again from fresh on Monday. Yeah, it continues again next Saturday. Guys, thank you for your company. As always, that's all from us for now. If you want more reaction to today's game, it'll be on the website for you, dsfc.co.uk. Excuse me, but for now, from me and the team, bye-bye.